cloud. Um, Raja, I think somebody waiting. We can take care of that. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So recording is on. I think we are all set. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'm going to do my best uh, on explaining these new features. And if anybody there uh, have used already and want to help me, you're welcome. And we can, you know, have this as a uh, interactive session too. And I don't have, I didn't prepare a lot of the uh, uh, slides because, you know, anyway, I'm going to do the demo. I think uh, I'm, I'm also a big fan of demo, seeing it live than uh, the slides. So I'm just going to start and, you know, some um, housekeeping things. I think you're all on mute, so you all know what to do. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask me uh, while I'm doing it, or you can ask me in the chat. Maybe I'll ask uh, Raja to read that out for me. So um, I think that's about it. And let me go to the next slide. Okay, that's the wrong one. I'm Suman Gajoli, CTO of Bits.io. Um, I've spoken at Conf uh, 2020, and I'm going to be speaking at 2021. We are partner of the year, Bits.io is. Uh, we are passionate about helping customers, and then we also spend a lot of time helping nonprofits. Um, agenda today is straightforward. It's enterprise security 6.4, but I think there is 6.6 .6 and the demo that I could find was 6.6 .6 as well. So I think the latest is better. So 6.6 .6 has more features than 6.4. So I'll probably, I should probably change that 6.4 to 6.6. .6. Um, and, you know, main features are going to be incident review, RBA features, um, multi-cloud um, um, security monitoring. Um, I, Really wanted quickly wanted to talk about the Splunk Study Club that uh, me, Aleem, and Tony um, has um, you know uh, built this together. It's uh, available on the uh, community Slack, and you have the QR code for the uh, uh, website. We have a website that's coming up, so I think we'll be discussing a lot of the basics. And if somebody wants to learn Splunk, we we will. Uh, if they are stuck with some questions, we can help them as well. So um, you can check this out. Um, there are other useful resources available, which will be available. At, uh, the recording will be available and you, you all can see it. Um, what else? So I think, yeah, let's uh, dive into demo. Um, I'm going to switch screens, so bear with me. Excuse me. Sure. Uh, can you go back to the slides? Uh, there is one resource called the uh, Splunk Live. What, what, what was that one? Uh, Splunk Live? Yes. So Splunk Live is uh, now virtual, but what, uh, what Splunk does is they usually do one day sessions uh, for, um, in different cities. Uh, and then they go over the new future, new features of Splunk and um, you know, they have uh, vendors on site who are promoting their products. So it's basically a conference, but it's one day. Uh -huh, but it is not virtual. So in my country, I cannot uh, see the other countries. Yeah, I, I thought it, on... it was virtual for some time. Yes, but now it is on site. Oh, okay. I, I should, I think there is a website where you can check which cities mm. is coming up and maybe you can okay. ask the questions sure. there. Okay. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, thank you. Let me share the demo. Let's see. Okay. Okay. This is the 
So it looks pretty similar when you uh, open uh, Splunk Enterprise Security, it's the same. Um, you can see the version here um, that it's uh, 6.6. .6. Um, and um, and so the main differences, are, what I've noticed was incident review. Incident review is the one that I think, you know, the analyst would like, uh, like these features uh, on this. So there's kind of, a, you know, more real estate, uh, I would say, like, you know, you, you can see the uh, incidents on this screen, you can hide the filters. And then you also have new feature, which is the hide uh, the charts. So it actually is going to give you uh, urgency uh, status of these uh, um, these notables and the owner and the domain. So you can uh, see it. And then probably if you want to uh, see which one are pending, which one are uh, resolved, you can probably click on this. And um, But if you if you if you don't need that, then you can actually just close it out. Uh, and then there are filters that you can close too. And one of the other things they they uh, mentioned was, uh, you know, if somebody is looking at something specific, uh, you know, they only uh, look at uh, critical ones. Let's say, right? So you can you can say, okay, I, I only want the critical one. And you can uh, say, I want to save it as a new filter, um, new critical filter. This wasn't there. Um, so I think you can create that and submit and it will only show you the critical ones. And then you can change back to the regular um, filter as well, the default one. And then it will pull all of the other ones. Um, and then you, you have different filters where um, I think one of the things I noticed was there are two different types of notables. Now with the RBA uh, feature, I think this is where um, you have risk notables um, uh, available as a new option for you. So the, the notables are created by correlation searches. Uh, the correlation searches are, I think, if I if I show you one one of the correlation searches, if you um, if you don't know how to get there, it's content and content management, and you pick the content uh, correlation searches. So correlation searches is where you have the uh, rules where it generates those notables. So with the new version, you have these annotations. Annotations are you can give the you know miter or kill chain or different um, types of annotations here. I'm not you know heavy on security, but this is where you actually mention the different types of miter attacks, and you have the uh, list here too, and that um, that will show you um, all the other things. Anybody has question? Is, is the list updated often or is it something? Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, we have the list here. Um, so I open that up uh, um, thinking somebody would ask me. So it is under the configure data enrichment and threat intelligence management. Once you click on here, you uh -huh. can see that you can have the data downloaded uh, from MITRE attack, I think they have a uh, GitHub uh, where it downloads that uh, every day with okay. the interval, right? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, okay, so um, I talked to a few people, I mean, not many have used this and uh, honestly, I haven't used it. I've implemented probably, you know, 50 um, so customers, but I've never used the RBA, but you know it was very interesting to learn. And I did reach out to some Splunk folks and they gave me some tips on how we can make one notable as a risk notable or a regular notable. So if you don't give any of these annotations and 
um, if you don't have the risk uh, uh, analysis enabled, I think that that will be a regular notable. And if we start adding the MITRE, let's say you have this MITRE, um, uh, the uh, ID, and then you enable these things like risk score. So you you can add, you know, if the source, uh, um, you know, one of the other things, interesting, uh, important things within enterprise security before you do that is most importantly, you have to figure out your assets and identities. What are your critical assets? What are your, um, who are your critical users, um, which is, which are identities, right? So those two are very important. Otherwise, this is not going to matter much with the risk scoring because if you know that this is the source that is very critical then you can say you know i want to give a risk score of 60 so based on the criticality of the resource or uh, the user or the or the source or destination you can set these scores and you can add more to you can add uh, you know maybe host and system something like that so you can uh, have different scores set here, and then um, that that way it will add the score based on what matches what it matches host field or source field. Um, and the correlation search has everything similar, same things except this annotation. And I think they said there's a new thing you can you can add your own annotations here too. Um, so if you have a different one, you can add that there. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I think um, uh, with the risk risk core or risk uh, um, RBA, I think risk based alerting is the is the main thing here, where you 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 have uh, some other ways to also do risk factors. Um, you can multiply if it is a contingent worker or contractor, you want to give a higher score or higher risk score, you can add those two. Um, like here um, for, for a contractor user, uh, if the user category is contractor, um, you can add five um, to the risk score. So um, I think those will um, be useful and you can you can set different things here. You can do a lot of things uh, based on what what uh, if it is admin user, if it is contract you, uh, user, um, if it's a destination that's very critical. So you can set like uh, if you see admin user, it's not the addition of five; it's the multiplication of this um, the regular. So let's say you set the on your correlation rule, you set rule uh, score as 50, then it multiplies that with the 50, 50 multiplied by 1.5. So, uh, so one, one question, anybody on here who used 6.6 uh, uh, .6 and have used RBA, any, any of you? say no i know it's a it's a new feature and i think in my next one probably i can do some session where you can create a new rule and then set the rba uh, mitre uh, ids and all that so that's that's one of the things i'll be i'll try to do um, in the next one um, let's see correlation search and the risk factor um, I think the incident review is where I want to go. So you can see now there are notables and there are risk notables. So risk notables are the ones where we gave the annotation and we gave some scores. So that's the that's the way you get the risk uh, notables. So if I only look for risk notables, then they will have the risk aggregated risk score. So these these will be based on however many matches it 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 has so there it might match on a host it might match on a user uh, it might match on a different set of things so uh, also the 
for risk uh, notable, there is there are these uh, different tags attached, risk notable. Um, and then I think risk uh, object is where we can, we can see, um, I think there are different um, things that you can do. So um, you can um, dig deeper into the risk attributions. I think asset framework, um, it just tells you more information, business unit category of that asset, uh, who is the owner and all those kinds of details. Uh, attack tax, tactics, I think uh, they, it will show you what are the different types of tactics have been used in the timeline. A uh, lot of information there. I think even, the, even this one is a timeline that it shows. So um, I think analysts, uh, are going to uh, be able to easily identify the timeline and, and see what activities was done uh, on, in which order. Um, so I think what, the way I understand, I think security folks might uh, understand this better, but what I understand is uh, earlier, we only have the notables. Notables mean it's individual use case where it will do brute force attack, but yeah, what if there is brute force attack? That's that's not a threat. Maybe a user is typing it in three, four times, uh, then it can become a brute force. But but the, there is a uh, MITRE attack uh, framework where you know after brute force, then they, they have access into one server and then they'll get um, admin privileges or they'll um, give privilege to, uh, roles to a user. So when you see all those tied together, then um, that will look like a threat or that gives you more confidence on that threat and you um, act on that threat um, faster than just individual use case uh, or in individual notables, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. I think that's uh, more on the risk notables. I promise, I think I'll have to learn more on the risk uh, um, dashboards and risk risk um, uh, RBA um, uh, piece, but uh, I, I'll definitely try to do another one um, next, next month. Um, let's see, I think what else I have. I think there, there was one way you can also see you know, how um, the MITRE information is being used. So MITRE has all these tactic IDs and then um, the software name, the technique they use, um, they do pass ETC password. So they, it has all that information downloaded and it will be available immediately. So the other way in the past is uh, uh, analyst has to go match this to the MITRE and then MITRE is somewhere else. So you have to do the queries and all that, but now this is available immediately tied to that notable and you can see, you can read all the information. Um, this is one command input intelligence MITRE attack and it will give you all the information about each tactic. And I think there are pages of those tactics here. Okay. Um, I think uh, the other feature, the other feature that um, Splunk highlighted was um, the multi-cloud security platform. What they mean by that is um, is actually the uh, the there is data access uh, data model. The, so the data access data model, what, what it does, it actually goes to um, um, different, uh, you know, AWS, Google uh, Box or um, Google Drive. So there are files being accessed, there are files being deleted. Um, all those things are going to be, uh, we, we have to do SIM compliance, of course, uh, every, Every data source has different types of uh, information. So I, I think um, 
you would have to normalize that. So let me see if I can quickly show you uh, what I mean by that. I think I have to go into the, um, let's see. So it's going to bring multi-cloud data into one data model. So if you see, let's say Google Drive uh, upload access, it, it has this format, right? And then Box has this different type. So uh, we have to normalize the actor.email, which is the field from Google, but you have to normalize the field name to email. In Box, it's, it, it is the field name created by login. So you rename that to email. So you kind of uh, do the sim compliance on the on the um, data model, um, data access, I think, yeah, data access. And then um, I did not actually find any dashboards that are related to this, but I think they are still working on that, um, that front um, where it, um, it has some dashboards to show because I did not find uh, really anything um, specific to the, uh, the data access, maybe the cloud um, uh, thing. But yeah, that's, the, that's another data model that, uh, that's being um, created um, as part of this. So um, let's see, I think what else I had. Um, the features wise, that's okay. I think the one I wanted to show was edit data objects. So the, I think when you do, uh, I think it's going to cover these, yeah. Um, so even though we have, we don't have the data model or dashboard um, list, but uh, it's going to cover these. So if a user copies, copies a file, creates a file, delete, modify, read, all these kinds of things, all these actions are captured. And then you, you have the user uh, or application ID um, and then destination, destination. Uh, and then I think it will cover uh, the object category. It's a collaboration. Uh, is it a file, folder, comment? task or note. Um, so I think uh, that's, uh, that's on the multi-cloud. So um, I know I went through a lot of different things uh, pretty quickly. Uh, anybody has any questions? Um, uh, I think, yeah, so this one, I think this was the one I changed. Um, but yeah, I think as I mentioned, the regular notable has the same set of fields, same set of um, options. But the, in addition to that, I think you have the risk analysis uh, available here to to add uh, the source. You can add host, and you can add destination, even the user too. I think if you have the user field, you can add the user field as well. Um, uh, so maybe there's SRC user, um, you can use the fields that are available, um, pretty much that. Um, I think features wise, um, I can only cover this much. Uh, there's probably um, more that I can learn on the RBA side. Um, but let me know if on the new features, if you would like to know anything, anything specific on those, maybe I can prepare um, in the future uh, sessions and, and present those. But I think definitely the one of the things I want to do is to uh, come up with the, you know, creating a new risk factor um, uh, editor, I think risk factor score, the one I showed you based on a contractor user, admin user, or even some, some of the cases, I think I can show one that I know for sure. If it, if it is a PCI one, you can, you can say, you know, multi, multiply 
and you can say any PCI device, um, and you, you can assign higher um, score, right? So you can add that and then factor, you can do maybe two or, or whatever um, is the importance that you feel like. And then um, source field might be SRC and uh, I think, the maybe it might have like a I think you can give something like um SRC equals to or it has some matches rejects or like or something and then you can do PCI and if it matches the PCI then I think you can do that and then you can save it so that way it, it gets saved um as the pci so i think you can search for that so the one i created is is this one so um src pci so um i think i can deep dive into those um also i can do maybe the you know deep dive into each panel um and then talk about i think um this is one where you can also see Timeline wise, you know, how uh, an attacker did different types of things to get into the system. So this will give you the timeline as well. So, um, yeah, so I think um, incident review, just to recap incident review, the, there are um, these um, charts that are extra that were given, you can hide them and you can do um, uh, hide the filters as well. I, I think I showed you how to create a new filter. So that's, uh, that's I think, yeah. you have to select and then submit it and it should be fine. Um, and what else? Uh, I think the, the differentiation between the notable and the um, risk notables are when you enable those annotations and the risk analysis within the correlation searches. Um, and then I think by looking at it too, you can tell that um, wherever you see the risk score, I think that's where that is the one which is the risk notable. Um, and I think that's fine. Um, and then we showed how the MITRE data is pulled, uh, the risk factors are covered, and then multi-cloud access. I think this is one thing I did talk to Splunk team. I think they are still building the data models or dashboards, I think. So usually um, one tip I can give you is uh, how do you know which data um, model is being used for which um, uh, which uh, dashboard, right? So I think there's um, this one, but I, I'm not sure why this uh, page wasn't opening. I tried it, but earlier it wasn't opening um, for whatever reason. Um, so usually this one should give you uh, this data model or these dashboards um, use these data models. Uh, that's the one I was trying to do. Unfortunately, I can't um, figure that out. Um, but maybe I can try to see if that link is bad with the new feature, I'm not sure. So yeah, I think, uh, that would have given me what dashboards are being built off of the data access data model. But yeah, I couldn't figure out why the doc link wasn't working. Um, so that's about it. Uh, that's all I have today. Uh, I see some chat, okay, messages. Um, oh, uh, Splunk core version. I think this will work on seven also based on my research let me look at the this one is 8.2.1 um i think uh, who has this um jeff yeah um this was uh it's 8.2 
that one. Mm. And then, uh, yes, I, and a few people asked if the recording will be shared. Yes, it will be available after this session. Um, yeah, you know, if you if you guys don't have uh, any questions, uh, I'm hoping you are, um, you at least got some information on the uh, new features. Excuse me. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if you have the answer or not. Maybe I should ask uh, Sablank. Uh, okay, I can find out if I, if I don't have uh, the answer. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, our Sablank license at our company would get expired in two months, which okay. is in November. I don't okay. know. We renew it. We will be forced to use this version 6.4, or it will be optional to stay in 6.3 or update. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the upgrade part is up to you. So, what happens is Splunk will um, say this is end of life after a year or so. As long as they don't say this is end of life, you can still use the older version. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. about the license, it will not. Uh, for example, during the renew for our license, they will not yeah. force us to use the new version? No, I don't think they will force you to upgrade. You can be on 6.3. Okay. You can, yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, meanwhile, yeah, during, this, during these two months, can we just uh, try the new version? Is there any option, for example, a free download for 6.4 or something? Um, you can ask your sales rep if they will give you that uh, version. Um, so they have to they have to provide you the software. Is it an on-prem or a cloud? No, on-prem. On-prem. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You should you should talk to them, uh, and then they will um, probably give you a um, copy of the latest version, um, mm -hmm. and then you can try it out. But what about the free license, which is in Sublank website? It is not included the newer version, or um, if it if if you have it uh, free, then I think you should be able to download and try it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, to check. Do you have a sales rep, or, or I can find out and let you know who who okay. will help you. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I will have this info. Uh, this is recording. I think I will upload, uh, update, and uh, upload in in a day. And then uh, I think we should be all um, we should be good to go from here. If, uh, if nobody has questions, um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, hope you enjoyed this uh, session. And you know, uh, as I mentioned, I'll uh, come back with the. Uh, deep dive on the RBA features. I think that's going to help uh, help a lot um, for any security professional. Um, thank you all, have a great day, bye now.